this is the making and selling sticker series. If you're sharing or selling your stickers online, you have to have high quality photos because if your stickers are great, but your photos suck, no one's gonna know how great your stickers are. And presentation goes a lot further than you think. There are a few parts required to take a good photo, so I've broken it into five things. The background, the styling and arrangement, the lighting, the camera, and the edit. So let's talk about backgrounds first. When shooting a product, you want it to be the focus and you want a clean service, but that doesn't mean it has to be boring. I like to incorporate colored paper into the backgrounds of my photos because it's a way that I can add a level of branding and personality, but there's nothing wrong with shooting on a white background either. Since stickers are usually on the small side, I'm able to use this 18 by 24 sheet of paper that I got from an art store and they had a ton of colors to choose from. You wanna make sure of two things when choosing paper. One, that the sheet is large enough. I recommend these 18 by 24 sheets. Those seem to be big enough. And two, that the paper is matte and not shiny. Shiny paper will cause reflections and just overall make the job really difficult. So unless you're a seasoned studio photographer, I recommend avoiding those shiny backgrounds. The goal of a product photo is to clearly show the product. So it's typically best not to complicate things. You can simply show one sticker or show a few. While we're still positioning and arranging, I take this time to clean up any dust or specks. We want everything to be as clean as possible so we don't have to spend time later editing those things out. The method that I recommend and what I do is I set up a studio light. This is an Aperture 300D light that I've attached to a C-stand. It also has a dome softbox attached to it. I have a few different domes for this light, but Honestly, either of these domes would work. But the main thing I wanna highlight is this sheet that goes over the light. It's called diffusion. Diffusing a light evens the concentration of the beam, creating what we call soft light. This softens the shadows and reduces glare. And it produces that typical look that we associate with product photography. Glossy stickers are more challenging to photograph than matte stickers. That's because glossy or shiny products tend to end up with a bit of a glare, which can obscure parts of the product. I avoid this by repositioning the light if needed. And sometimes we end up using a bounce board to further manipulate the light if needed. And you can basically use any kind of large white surface as a bounce. If you don't have a high quality light, I recommend using natural light. If the weather permits, you could shoot outside during the day. An overcast day is the best case scenario because the clouds work just like that diffusion sheet. Or you could shoot inside next to a window during the day. You will end up having a lot less control over the light and the shadows, but you still should be able to get a fairly decent photo. Now that everything's set up, let's talk about cameras. I have my fiance Mike here, who's a photographer, and he'll fill you in. So we're gonna get started with hardware first, but lighting is actually the most important thing in product photography. So if you don't have a budget to spend on a camera, I would recommend spending most of your budget in lighting as it will get you the furthest. I would recommend first using your phone, but if you are at a point where you are ready to spend some money on a camera, here's a crash course in what you need. So there are two parts to a camera body and lens, and they are swappable. So as you can see, these come off, and you have your camera body and your lens. This is the same throughout all camera systems, whether you go Fujifilm or Sony, Canon, Nikon, etc. Some cameras have fixed lenses, but you're better off going with a camera that has swappable lenses as they are the most versatile. Let's talk about lenses. Lenses have two main components, aperture and focal length. Focal length is how wide or narrow your images will be. For example, on the extreme ends, we have telephoto, which could be at 200 millimeters or 400 millimeters. That we would use to photograph things that are far away. And then we have the wide end, which could be at 12 or 16 millimeter and that we would use to photograph a wide scene without being too far from the object. Product lenses typically fall within the 50 to 110 millimeter range. But before you buy a lens, you're gonna to need to consider what your setup will be and the purposes of the lens. If you are gonna be doing overhead work, for example, you'll probably wanna go for a lens that is in the 50 millimeter or close range, so your tripod doesn't need to be that high up. Personally, I have a 120 and a 95 millimeter lens that I use for product photography. If I was doing overhead work, I would probably opt to go for a 45 millimeter lens. The next number you need to know about is aperture. This is the number after the focal range, which usually starts with an F, followed by a number such as f1.4 or f2.8. The larger the aperture, the smaller the number. This translates to depth of field or how much blurriness you have in the background. A large aperture is a really desired look where if you shoot a subject, they will be fully in focus and the background will be completely blurred out. An f1.2 or f1.4 will definitely achieve this look for you, but also keep in mind the larger the aperture, the higher the cost. Lucky for you in product photography, you can get away with using an f4 lens, which will most likely be a cheaper option. Now onto cameras. Here we have a few main specifications, the manufacturer, the sensor size, and the sensor type. First, I would recommend buying a very modern camera, 
So the sensor will definitely be a mirrorless sensor. DSLRs are older style cameras. For a sensor size, there are two main options, full frame and ASPC or crop frame. Either will do, but I would personally recommend going full frame if you can and it makes sense because your images will be a larger resolution. But for general purposes, such as the products that you're gonna put on your website or social media, crop frame will be more than enough. As for manufacturers, Sony has been in the game the longest and they are definitely the most popular. Personally, I shoot Fujifilm and I have both an X-Series camera, which is a crop frame, and a GFX camera, which is a medium format. Fujifilm is definitely a great option, but you will most likely have more friends with Sony cameras and that means you can borrow their lenses. So Sony's a pretty good option. Canon and Nikon are both options as well. They joined the full frame mirrorless market in 2018. So they're both relatively new. Canon has some pretty solid lens options that I've seen. As for Nikon, I personally know some people who have this system and they have since switched to Sony. So I'd probably skip out on Nikon. So what should you buy? Well, I polled a bunch of my friends who are not into photography and asked them if they were starting up a shop, how much budget would they have to allocate towards a camera? And the numbers were not very high. On the high end, we have around $1,000 to $2,000. And for the most part, cameras are very expensive. I'm sure if you started looking into it, you'll start seeing camera bodies, just bodies, not lenses, start out at around 2,000 to 3,000. Some, the new Sony just came out and that's a $4,000 camera body. So what should you do? Well. First, I would recommend considering a used camera. I would go with a higher end Sony, perhaps, something full frame with a zoom lens that's pretty versatile. So you can use this for your product photography and then also go do some lifestyle shots as well. But ultimately, if your budget is around $1,000 for a camera, let's pretend you bought lighting already. I personally recommend starting out using your phone with quality lighting, it'll get you the furthest. And when your sales are up and you're ready to take your product shots to the next level, then I would recommend looking into a more expensive camera to do your product shots. If you're interested in photography, check out Mike's channel. I'll leave a link to it below. Assuming you've lit your product well and started with a clean surface, you shouldn't have too much to edit, but generally speaking, you'll probably wanna do a little bit of color correction at least. You can do this a few different ways, but some common tools for this are Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. At this point, I have a lot of stickers and I like everything to look nice and consistent. So I created a file that I use as a template. I like using the square one-to-one -one ratio format because it works well for my shop and it's good for Instagram too. I can now use these photos to promote my stickers on all sorts of different platforms. Stay tuned for part four of this series where we look at how to choose an e-commerce platform and pricing. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing for more content like this. And if you have any questions, leave them below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.